Hi, in this video I'm going to make a window visor just for the front door. I will start to attach the visor here in this and go up all the way until this point. Um, the visor will be attached to this door frame. Hold it with the uh, double side adhesive tape. And if you notice this door frame, it's curved in this direction. And it also twisting, uh, it's slowly twisting. If you look from this wheel, it will twist gradually from starting point to the end point. So when I'm going to uh, create this part, I'll use loft command. If the twisting angle is constant, I can use a sweep command. But in this case, when the mounting point has a twisting plane and the twisting angle is not constant, I will need to make a cross section in a different part and love it together. I can print up to 35, but to be safe, about 33. So that's going to be one piece, two pieces, or three pieces. If I, um, if I can print at the 33 centimeters length, I'm going to need uh, three parts. Then I make a mechanical joint. It's quite a long part. Magnetic marker. Okay, now we use a Raptor X uh, for making this uh, scan. I do it in a 34 line crawl laser. I also need to scan this plastic part because it's starting point. So I will spray it. So I click on uh, continue to scan. Then I will uh, continue to scan this part. See so now it's scanned. I only need this uh, plastic part to be visible to the scanner. So I can know where starting point is. So that would be my starting point. Let's scan this a little bit more. Okay, it's all done. Okay, uh, let's fill it. Um, 0 0.3 millimeter and remove the marker okay here's the result um, 1.8 million points is uh, quite a lot uh, for this part okay so I will export this as the point cloud um, ASC format Okay, here's the wiser parts that I uh, designed using Odex Inventor. I import the point cloud from the 3D scanner. I uh, use it as a reference for tracing the shape and profiles of the door frame. Uh, the wiser will be divided into four parts. One, two, three, and four. And they are held together by using the pins. And I will use the adhesive in combination with the pins for helping with the bonding so the profiles of the visor will follow uh, the shape of the door frame in all angle okay first step i create the first sketch 
by cropping the point cloud into a thin section and then address the, the arc. The first line is here and that would be the door frames. So I extend it about 2 cm because it's a starting point and I use 5 mm for the thickness of this visor and on the end part it will be uh, 2 mm so it's slimmer and the extended part will be in a curve and make a 100 degree angle uh, from the body of the car then I create a second sketch here and then I create a 3D line uh, with a spline I used uh, three splines to uh, make the rails and the spine will follow the curve of the door panel see here so I can adjust the curve uh, by moving this if it's go out too much I can adjust it until it's touch uh, the surface of the door frame and then and then I use a loft command to loft between the two sketches and using uh, 3D lines for the rail so I have the first part uh, created I make a third sketch here cross section sketch with the 3D lines and then I loft it so I can adjust all the curve to get along with the door frames uh, then I make a fillet on the two corners and also one more fillet here uh, then I place uh, the model of the pins. Uh, the pin is in a diamond shape because I want to print from this side up. Uh, before that, I try to print with uh, this side facing the build plate and it's failed. So I need to print uh, from this side up and uh, I won't be needing the support if I make a diamond shape. But in this area, I still need a support but not in this area. So I make it a diamond shape and I use uh, this for cutting for cutting into um, the visor, the first part of the visor. So there will be three uh, pins for the first part because it's narrower. And I do the same for the second part. I um, trace the door frame for the sketch there. Yeah, so this um, this curve is rely on the 3D scan data or the point cloud. So the alignment of the door frame is, is in a, a three dimension. There is zero a flat plane on this door frame so uh, this second sketch I extend it a little longer 50 millimeter I use the same thickness and the same angle 100 degrees uh, from the car body so it will extend a little bit outside of the window and I make a concave here so that uh, rainwater won't be uh, dripping inside and then I create the rails same as before I use the uh, this uh, gizmo, this node for uh, moving so I can use this node for uh, moving uh, adjusting the curve so I can adjust all the curve by using this uh, 3D lines so I make uh, three rails one, two and three there's gonna be uh, curved rails so I can do all the adjustment so you can do uh, adjustment layer if it's not uh, blend in or is it too uh, shallow or too um, flat so you can change anything anytime you can come back and change it later and then I use a uh, loft command uh, to loft the sketch uh, using the rail and so same thing I put four pins here one two three and four for um, holding the parts together uh, using the same pins the pin thickness is uh, three millimeters okay here's the fourth part i do the same thing uh, with the same sketch uh, i just curve a bit and uh, this will be the final part the final part is a bit different i use a uh, fillet to end it because it's the end point and i think i forgot something i forgot to uh, conceal this end so that the water won't be coming in okay so this is quite an um, easy part to model comparing with my the previous video project um, there's three parts and it's quite easy so the extension is uh, proportion is in the proportion of the of the angle on the door frames so if it twists a lot then it's go out further so if this one the starting point is twist just a little bit so um, Here's a part that has been modeled. This one you can also adjust the shape and the profiles later. Okay, next I'm uh, gonna send this part save as the step files and send it to the slicer. 
Okay, here's in the slicer. I put uh, four parts onto the build plate. Uh, my first attempt is that I was trying to print in this uh, vertical direction uh, because it give a smoother curve uh, on this side by facing down the flat part, which is a joint. The joint part is flat, so I face it down the build plate, but it's only five uh, millimeter thick. So when I actually print it, as you can see from the video here, uh, when it reach about 15 centimeter, it start to create a C bending and uh, this part here on the left start to move and we go around and finally fail to print uh, because of the brim, even though I use the brim, it's not, it's just one layer thick and it's not strong enough to hold uh, the part. Okay, so I have to stop the printing. Uh, this part has no issue. Uh, this part, you can see, start to have an issue because it start to vibrate. It's too thin uh, to be printed in this orientation. And this part is, I mean, I can, it's just start to fall off the print bed because the brim cannot hold it. Uh, I think this uh, printing in this orientation will cause trouble. I learned something today. The narrowest part is 5 mm. So if I print it up to 15 cm tall, it will start to give a C bending from the vibration. So um, when it's print taller, the printer will vibrate. So it's, um, it's going to give a C bending uh, like this. So the slenderness ratio uh, for this printer, K2 Plus. Uh, for 5 mm wide, the narrowest part is 15 cm, so 5 by 150, that would be 1 by 30. Now this one gives the first C banding here, which is about 16.5 uh, cm, so it's about the same. So about 15 cm is going to give a C banding, and if I continue to print taller, so this one is um, 26 and it's going to fail because it's vibrate too much and the brim cannot hold it. So you need to consider the slenderness ratio for when you do a 3D printing with the uh, slim and long part. And if you look at this part in my previous video, I used a K1 Max to make a 3D print. And it start to give a wrinkling at the beginning of the first layer from the high speed defect but with the K2 plus the ringing is, is not there but it's vibrate probably the same as this one but this one I printed successfully because it's not flat it has a curve which give uh, stability uh, when printing this part and it also has support that uh, hold it help uh, to increase the stability. Okay, in my second attempt, I print it in this orientation instead. So it's quite short, less than 10 centimeters. And I angle it uh, for some degree so that the curved part here will be a print on the support because there is no flat part here except for the joint part. And this one uh, was printed successfully. Uh, it takes about six hours for printing. Okay, I have already finished the printing. Five hour, almost six hour. So uh, printing in this orientation is success. And for the ABS, it's a pause. It's very easy to remove. Comparing with the PTG, uh, this one is faster. We remove the support, but uh, as I told you before, it's not as strong as a PTG. We need to sand this part. Okay. It's, it's quite easy to remove for the and sand this off. This part has already been sanded. It's quite smooth. So ABS is very easy to sand. Unlike a PTG you cannot sand it. Okay let me uh, remove all the supports sand it and then I start to assemble
Okay, so I have already attached all the clips, so four parts. This is um, about one meter long. Yes, it's one meter. For you inserting the clips, you need to remove all the remaining support inside of the pocket because it's, uh, if you don't, it's going to be difficult to push uh, the pins into the slot and without adhesive it's already uh, hold itself quite well but it's very really thin only five millimeter uh, I think I'm gonna drop some of the super glue uh, into the gap on both sides so that it will hold its position lock type 401 I'm gonna put uh, three drops. One, two, three drops. Try to open it and push go in there. Squeeze it. Okay, now it's all glue up. Uh, it should be ready for test installation. So I only glue on the uh, outside because on the inner side it only has a pin to hold it. So it's all glue up. Okay, let's do the test fitting. I put a uh, double side adhesive tape. Um, about three points because um, I'm going to remove it for uh, painting. I'm going to apply the filler to fill uh, the joints and then I'm going to uh, use the primer paint and top coat. But I'm going to do it in the next video because I don't have time. Put a masking tape here, uh, so it will be the starting point. Ah, uh, it fits the curve of the car. Here's the result. Look from the front. It's all aligned with the door frame. All the angle and twisting. Curve is fitting the, the door curve. Is the gap here is not too wide. I think I can use a filler to fill and sand it. Uh, I'll do that in the next video. And the cap is quite smooth. Alright, uh thanks you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.